questions. Um, the first one is um, on the rules of exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. For instance, if it's 24 hour and for some reason one hour can't be covered, do you have to repose the Blessed Sacrament? And if you do, how many times would that be allowed? And also, is it allowed to expose the Blessed Sacrament like during a retreat when someone is speaking, giving a talk? Oh, you said three questions. Well, that's, sorry. That's already three. <laughs> or is this one? That's one with several parts. Oh, I see. <laughs> I may have to understand well. You mean there is blessed sacrament exposed in the monstrance? Yes. And the people are adoring, but there is one hour when there is nobody to adore. Uh -huh. And you are asking, is it then obligatory to put the blessed sacrament back into the tabernacle? I am not sure whether there, whether there is any rigid law laid down for that. But the idea would be that if there are not people adoring, the Blessed Sacrament is put back. But when it is a few minutes, it looks meticulous to insist there. What is more important is security, that the Blessed Sacrament be not exposed and there's nobody there in case there is somebody of bad will who comes there to take away the Blessed Sacrament. That is more urgent, uh, the security part of it. If that is secure, in many places they have iron grating so that even if a person wished, he could not get at the monstrance. That's more urgent. During retreat, it is when the Blessed Sacrament is exposed, we are expected to be in prayer and adoration. Yes. During a one-hour adoration, the priest can give a brief reflection or there can be reading of scripture. It should not be, but if it is a whole retreat with a long retreat conference, then it is better that the Blessed Sacrament be not exposed. If it is a short reflection, it's all right. But it is not something rigidly laid down in the books. It is not. Okay. Um, is there a time when dance is allowed during the Mass? And also, how about secular music? Ah, you said three questions. So <laughs> I, can first... I can sit down any time. I just thought uh, I got to No, no. <laughs> the... Dance is not known in the Latin rite of the Mass. Our congregation has considered it for years. There is no major document of the church on that. But the directive we give from our congregation is this. In the strict liturgy, that means the Mass, the sacraments, Europe and America should not talk of liturgical dance at all because dance as known in Europe and North America does not, is not part of worship. So they should forget it and not talk about it at all. But it is different in Africa and Asia. Not a concession to them but because their culture is different. If you give a typical African the gifts to bring at offertory, and you give a typical European the same gift to bring, if they don't see one another, the European will be rather stiff in walking to the altar. The African is likely to have movement right, left. It is not a dance. It is a graceful movement to show joy and offering. Also in Asia, they have refined movements showing respect 
adoration, joy. In Africa, all the cultures are not the same. If you are in Ashanti in Ghana, they have some refined movements. The bishops of each country have to watch this, knowing that the aim, the reason for mass, the reasons are for adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and asking for what we need. If the movements help towards that, yes. If they do not, no. Now, if you say dance in Europe and in North America, people think of Saturday evening, ballroom dance, one man, one woman. And it is all right as recreation, but we do not come to mass to enjoy. We don't come to mass to admire people and clap for them and say, repeat, repeat, wonderful, excellent. That is all right for the auditorium, for the theater, even for the parish hall. Presuming that the dance is acceptable from moral point of view, because there are some dances that are wrong everywhere. <laughs> even in the parish hall and in the theater, they are wrong because they are provocative unnecessarily. So, and also in Africa and Asia, every dance is not acceptable. There are some dances that are totally not acceptable in any religious event. So it, it differs. But as for North America or Europe, we think that the dance should not enter the liturgy at all. And the people discussing liturgical dance should spend that time saying the rosary. <laughs> Uh, or they should spend that time reading one of the documents of the Pope on the Holy Eucharist. We have already enough, we have already enough problems. Why banalize more? Why desacralize more? Haven't we already enough confusion? Yeah. Amen. If you want to admire a dance, you know where to go. But not mass. And then the, the not you, of course. It's other people. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the secular music, you know, not... Ah, yes. Obviously, every music has its own setting. We come to Mass for, again, those four reasons I mentioned. Does that music mean adoration of God or praise of God or asking pardon for our sins and the reparation or begging God for what we need? Recreation is very different. The, you know, the maestro who gesticulates and makes funny movements, most of them unnecessary, and then he finishes, he makes a, bit, a deep bow, and there's a standing ovation. That's good for theater, but not for mass. <laughs> Young people's rock music, they enjoy, enjoy, is good for picnic, <laughs> but not for mass. Everything has its proper place. Therefore, the bishops of each area should get a good music commission okay. so that they have music book containing Catholic hymns so that only Catholic hymns are sung because what we sing should manifest what we believe and should nourish our faith and not just sing anything. It should be theologically deep liturgically rooted and musically acceptable. Unfortunately, many things sung in some Catholic churches should not figure at all inside the church.